Broadcast Network, After Buzz TV. Over 20 million weekly downloads in over 150 countries, and your number one source for after show entertainment. <laughs> TV, the destination for TV superfans, producing after shows for over 300 of your favorite TV shows, interviewing celebrities and showrunners, and bringing you behind the scenes exclusives. All thanks to E Entertainment's Maria Menunos, producer Kevin Undergaro, and internet leader Akamai. Now, let the buzz begin! Pick it up slow. Hey. hey, are we turned up again, ladies? Pop we pop are. Pop. We are. It's fun ooh, to ooh. turn up pop every Sunday, right? Pop it. Pop it. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome to another amazing After Buzz episode of Christina Million Turned Up, Season 1, Episode 2. If you haven't done so yet, tune into After Buzz TV slash or I'm sorry, tune into YouTube slash AfterBuzz TV as well as tune into AfterBuzz TV to watch us live. Or you can tune into iTunes or SoundCloud. Make sure you give us comments, give us five stars, let us know how you feel about our show. Also, you can find us or you can find me on Instagram at Pink English as well as on Twitter, English Speaks. I am joined by my lovely, lovely, lovely co-host. Hey everyone, it's Francesca. You can find me Twitter, Instagram, XOXO, C-E-S-C-A. It's Michelle Renee, guys, and you can find me on Twitter and Instagram, as always, at Michelle Renee TV. Hey guys, Robin Ayers here. You can find me at Robin, A-Y-E-R-S. And make sure you guys tune in, and when you do, do the hashtag that we have for our show, ABTV. C-M-T-U, <laughs> which is After Buzz TV, Christina Million Turned, turned Up. up. So I know Actually, that- Actually, sorry for the corrections. ABTV Turned Up. Oh, hey, somebody. Okay, <laughs> right. it's ABTV turned, turned up. up. Now we know. That was coming from live from our beautiful fifth member on the panel today. <laughs> we have a luscious- gorgeous bottle of Viva Diva that Robin is going to introduce us to. Yeah, I'm really excited for you all because you haven't tasted this before, right? No, Not we yet. haven't. Well, ladies and gentlemen, after buzzers, we have our wonderful Viva Diva wines that was gifted to us from co-partners Carmen and Christina Milian. So I'm really excited for you guys to taste this. It's strawberry Moscato. Ooh, I yes. know. So I'm going to do the honors of pouring Please mine first. Do. Thank you. <laughs> and now you you know why we say Sunday brunch? It's like an evening Sunday brunch. Here Absolutely. we are. Absolutely. Yay. I'll Hurry up, Michelle. I'm ready. So we can all drink together. <laughs> <laughs> and you guys can also go online and buy it at um, vivadiva.com and you can order a case. It is sold in certain states, so they may have it at your local wine and spirits store. Yes, and wines.com. And it smells really it good. Does. I, I'm telling you, I just can't wait. So, ladies, let's cheers. cheers. Let's turn that bottle so they can see see the bottle. It's really pretty. It's beautiful. Cheers. Cheers, cheers, ladies. cheers. To Christina Million turned up. Cheers. Yes. Thank cheers. you again, Thank Carmen you, Christina. and Christina. Thank you, Carmen. Oh my God. It's great. Right. It's good. Go ahead and let that, you know, go down your throat right. really nicely. Isn't it really, really yummy? If it I'm is. quiet, it's because I'm drinking. Right. Hello. <laughs> we Thank drinking you. or we thinking. Right. <laughs> <laughs> So let's get into this episode, ladies. It was, of course, turned up again it this was. week. We had it turned up by Richard. <laughs> he, oh, Richard. We kind of, it was a to-be-continued cliffhanger from last week. Right. So we were introduced into this week with Richard being really hyped, really crunk, really belligerent. Hopefully he was <laughs> drinking some Viva Diva and hopefully he doesn't turn us that way. Um, but... He just was really over the top. So what do you guys think? How did you guys think? Did you think he was over the top or am I just being dramatic? No, he definitely was wigging out. <laughs> <laughs> See what she did there? <laughs> no, but I mean, when you're drunk, you don't even realize like half the time, like 
like when he spoke later with um, Carmen, she's like, I don't think you knew what you said, but that's true. When you're drunk, you don't even realize how off you're going. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he definitely was going off. Yeah. Richard, I think Richard is really a good guy, but he was coming off so funny and belligerent. I guess belligerent is going to be the word of the night for for Richard, for Richard, because (laughs) um, he really didn't know what he was talking about. And it was really funny. We were like, does he know? Does he get it? He was stumbling over his words, but I think he's really a good guy. Just happened to be turned up that night (laughs) what do you think michelle um he was i definitely agree he was a little too turned and this might sound disrespectful that's no that's what i was gonna say this might sound bad but i feel like it's one thing for a guy to like disrespect you if you're in a relationship but like never disrespect my mom Mm -hmm. so i don't know that was kind of the only i mean not that i want him to like yell at his wife or anything like no definitely not but i'm saying like i feel like when it comes to the parents you just have to kind of like bite your tongue sometime and when he was like i don't care whose birthday party it is like no don't say that (laughs) (laughs) please care (laughs) but i will say this though i think that um they it says a lot about carmen though because i think she's established somewhat of a of a not friendly type of relationship, but a comfortable relationship mm-hmm. that makes maybe him feel like he can talk that way. Mm-hmm. And, and honestly speaking, I didn't see that he was blatantly disrespectful. I know she said on this particular episode when they were sitting down having lunch or brunch or whatever, mm-hmm. that they um, that he had, you know, dropped the glass or whatever he mm-hmm. did. She was saying some things that he had done wrong and that he was raising his voice a little bit. But um, when we watched the last episode, I personally didn't see that he was blatantly disrespectful. He was just drunk. Yeah. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, but hey, I mean, if she feels like he was, you know, stepping out of line, then hey, he was stepping out of line. Right. <laughs> I mean, it definitely was awkward, an awkward situation for sure. It definitely yeah. was. It, it, and it was funny just to see. And you always like when people tell you the next day, you were doing this or you were doing that and you never like you're like no I was I would never act that way (laughs) and then now when he saw the episode tonight or whenever he watched it he was probably like what the heck was I talking about the baby the baby needs to be fed and the diapers (laughs) need to be changed like we know that that's that's the whole (laughs) life of a baby we get it Richard but then I did think he did get out of line like you said um, and a little bit of tinge of disrespect knowing that Mm -hmm. it's her birthday party and um like we saw Carmen when they sat down and talked about it and when she was saying you know we always have to represent each other as a family as a unit we've kind of created this together we've sacrificed a a lot and now you know everything is about building Christina's brand Mm -hmm. so obviously with her being her manager there's going to be friends that are workers and people that are established Mm -hmm. with them and so she you know was referring to people that are friends as well as you know associates associates right and so she was saying to him which i thought was kind of a little bit i could get what he was saying like why does everything have to be about christina Mm -hmm. then when you think about if she had friends there that she were associates with and or she's their boss or something it kind of does come off like like you're really drunk and you're acting yeah. crazy. Mm-hmm. I, I got what she was saying. Um, mm-hmm. And I understand what he was saying too. He's like, whoa, like we're trying to have a discussion and you're making this about Christina's career. But I think what she was saying and not to play devil's advocate, I just see the point. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like she was just saying like, but you were wilding out a little bit when we had these type Guessed. of people there. Yeah. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. I mean, we have to be careful about that in the future because even parties or something, you know, different things like that, our whole lives tend to be somewhat worse work associated so mm-hmm. you have to be careful with just the way that you act yeah, so right. I don't think it was like oh you're messing with Christina's career and it's all about Christina I don't think it was like that I yeah. think it was just like chill dude we always have people around right <laughs> do you guys think he was kind of copping out when he said well I was the only male and you guys are all coming against me I don't, I don't think it's a cop out because I come <laughs> from my dad's the only guy in my family it's my sister and my mom and there's times when he's like oh my god it's just you females you know what I mean too much (laughs) estrogen yeah so I I totally I totally get it but so I don't think it's a cop out but you know you know you knew that going in and you know that being in that family so you can't use it as an excuse I think it was sweet though when he was like 
despite it all, like I just deal with this because I love Danielle. Yeah. And so at, despite <laughs> everything that he did in that moment, I was like, okay, Richard, you're, you know, you're cool with me again. Yeah. Right. Richard's cool. And, and I have yeah. to uh, come from a point of, in my household, my husband is the only male yeah. in my house as <laughs> right. well. Because, you know, me and my tw- my two twins, we hold it down. All the three of us, we hold it down. And sometimes he's like, whoa. And so he gets in his feelings a little bit sometimes. Like, you know, wait a minute. You know, right. there's all these, you know, all this girl power against me. So I can kind of see where Richard is coming from just because I can understand when my husband is that way. So right. sorry, Richard. Well, kudos <laughs> to you, Richard, because um, Danielle kind of hit a little soft spot again. She would, We did see a little bit of tears again this episode. <laughs> yeah. I feel you, girl, like I said last week. Um, she, her life, she said she's just used to rejection. Right. She's used mm. to people, you know, walking out of her life. Her mom, you know, was... Um, on the road with Christina and then her dad married her mistress which every time I hear that I'm always like cringe right yeah Yeah. I'm like lord have mercy sorry girl (sighs) so it just you know it kind of gives us an understanding more of her and not saying oh you're such a crybaby it's just something that she has to work through and has to understand and hopefully this that will be an example for her with her children you know yeah. to understand you know I was used to this situation rejection I would never want you to feel that way and her using that those tears and that energy to nurture them and help them understand that she's always yeah. there for them I agree you know I have to give it to Danielle actually when I think about the situation because uh it's a lot for you for the things that from her perspective she's been through Mm -hmm. to be able to cry that all out Mm because some people bottle it in and Mm -hmm. it destroys them and you know so for her to be that's actually to me very strong you know the fact that she's just you know Mm -hmm. um, pouring out her emotion rather than keeping it in I have to say big up to you Danielle yay I have I have two thoughts on it um I I I can understand because I know a lot of women feel like they have like that cycle of rejection as I've you know been there done that as well so it's really hard but I feel like if and I'm playing devil's advocate totally Mm -hmm. because I totally know how it is but like if you all you do is always cry or always just blame well I'm just it's used to the cycle Mm -hmm. like that's also on you to like step out and see what you need to do Mm -hmm. to make it right right you know and then the other thing I was going to say was when she said I'm I'm not something about being able to step out on my marriage and with my mm-hmm. kid in tow. But when this, so this is kind of a question for you guys. Mm-hmm. When is it like, when is it okay to give up like that? Cause marriage to me is like sacred. You, you make those vows, it's there, you know what I mean? So what do you guys feel about that comment? I think with her, she's, I don't know if she was married but I know she's ha- she has a kid in a previous relationship. So I think just with people that are in a second relationship, a new marriage or a new person, they can just use that line or that kind of escape goat just to be like, well, I don't mind leaving because I've like done it threat. before. You know, yeah. Yeah. it's easy to say that. But like, I agree with you. Marriage is sacred. It, that should be nothing that you should ever bring up unless it's something like crazy. Yeah. Like, not you guys got into an argument at my mom's party. Like you're going to sleep on the couch for a couple nights, but you'll come back. <laughs> yeah. You'll come back in the room and. Well, I'll be backing it up again. (laughs) But until then, you'll be on the couch. But um, I think it, I don't know. But what, you know, everyone's breaking point is different. Like, mine would, I don't even know. I don't even want to put it out there because I want my boyfriend to get any ideas. (laughs) So I'll let you guys answer the rest. (laughs) What the breaking point would be? Yeah. Who's to say unless you're actually in it? You know what I'm saying? Because I feel like even if you were to say, oh, if he ever cheat on me or whatever, when that actually comes around, who's to to say? It depends on what the circumstances Mm -hmm. uh, were that he cheated. Or maybe you're just in a a place that you never thought you would be. Maybe you're like, we actually can work through this or Mm -hmm. whatever. So, I mean, I never really, I don't know, I don't trip on anybody else's relationships (laughs) or anything like that because whatever they're going through is whatever they're going through. Everybody's breaking points are their own. Mm -hmm. And we don't know. And it's hard for us to say and judge because once you're in that situation, you never know how you're going to handle it. You're right. There's a lot of variables when yeah, it comes. Absolutely. And then it's always easy for the people in the outside to say, well, that was something you should have broke up and left him for. Well, that yeah. was something, you know, and it may not be. It may be something different for you. And the hard part about it for them, especially now, is they're going through all of this in the public eye. Mm-hmm. And they have people like us who are <laughs> breaking like down the situation. Acting like we're there, right? We'll never <laughs> yeah, know right. every little thing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and th- thankfully, we're not saying, you know, yeah, anybody no. break up yeah. or anything. I think we're 
they're rooting for them. Yeah. But um, th- the point is that they still have people in the public eye who are looking and dissecting every single p- piece of their uh, relationship, you know? Right. Yeah. I mean, I think we can all agree that this definitely shouldn't be her breaking her like point to like leave. <laughs> Right, well, you sure. know, like, unless there's something happened off camera, but like, no, like, the pool and drowned <laughs> yeah. or tried to drown or something. No, they That's can little... definitely get over this a little. Well, yeah, they they seem even when they were at the uh, the golf course, they seem she's like, okay, so how do we move forward? Like, apologize to my mom. Good mm-hmm. luck with that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And then let's move forward because that was really really small in the grand scheme of things. Absolutely. Right, and like you said, he said, "I do all this because I love her." Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, He's so cute. He is cute. And <laughs> and talking about cute, I mean, we saw a little snippet which was super adorable of Christina and Violet washing her car so and just cute. seeing the bond and the relationship as yeah. her raising her as a single parent as well as you know imagine all the people that are watching the show there's a lot of women that look up to her there's a lot of women did you enjoy that Michelle that I tip? was like I slurped it a little bit I didn't mean to did you um, slurped it I did <laughs> Pardon me. (laughs) That means that it's really good. Sorry, guys. We're enjoying this. Um, Usually we're drinking water, so this is a lot for us. But anyways, um, it just saw... I I just... To me, it came to my mind just the demographic of people that are watching and, and just people that are seeing that look up to her, that are single moms, that are busy moms that are raising their children, trying to balance the whole thing. And mm-hmm. then just to see the the relationship between them and how she's telling her, you're the you're the most best <laughs> oh, daughter so in the cute. whole universe. <laughs> and she's telling her mom, well, you're the best too. I know that's like, as your mom, that's like the best thing that you could ever hear from anybody in the yeah, whole world. Ever. I mean, when you have to, especially I'm a woman, so to have little girls mm-hmm. look up to me or say certain things like that to me, I mean, nothing better in the world. There's no better feeling in the world. So I, I totally see where Tina's coming from. Like like that whole cute moment of them washing the car and stuff like that, yeah. that just must, mm-hmm. oh gosh, that must feel amazing for her. Yeah. I know, to the point where she was getting emotional about it. Yeah. 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 And it cut the, the thickness of reality show. It's like, okay, we're in a reality show, which we all know is not reality because mm-hmm. it's very contrived but you could totally see that it was natural that she really does love her mom and that Christina really does care for her daughter and that she wants the best for her and that she really does believe that she's the best person in the whole world. Yeah, and I, I'm glad that they actually are showing this part of her life mm-hmm. because um, Christina Milian turned up. Listen to the, the name of the show. I mean, they're showing her in a turned up phase in her life and Mm -hmm. you know doing different things or whatever but the reality is she is a mom and Mm -hmm. she's a a loving mom and her daughter loves her you know I mean they're just so cute so I'm just glad that they're able to show this side of her as well yeah Yeah. I agree too like I mean feel like the beginning of the first episode the Mm -hmm. daughter wasn't in it and I was kind of questioning like oh I wonder if they're gonna show the daughter I wonder if they're allowed to you know for whatever reasons so I was glad to see that they're showing the daughter as well because I think that's a good juxtaposition, like you said, between like Christina Milian, this like kind of fun, wild, yeah, you know, superstar versus like the mom side of her. And yeah. have you guys ever seen Violet like out and about um, on the red carpets or whatever? No. no. Okay, I'm just saying if they give that girl enough camera time, she's gonna steal the show because Violet is amazing. Like she's <laughs> just the she's a ball of like light. Aww. You know, she's really amazing. So I, you know, I'm just I'm actually kind of surprised that you guys have never like seen her out and everything like that. <laughs> She's really, really I've definitely so cute. seen her on Instagram. Yeah. Instagram. I've seen pictures of her. Yeah. And just kind of like watched her grow up just, you know, exactly. through the years. So yes. I want to be She's friends with Violet. I know. <laughs> we need to Everybody have her. It's like, we need friends. a little tea party with you. Next like, week, on. we will not have you. <laughs> We will have, we'll Violet have tea with Violet sitting on the couch with us. Hopefully, Christina let us know. <laughs> so another special thing, the dynamic of Danielle and her husband Richard and drama. And then we get Lizzie, who is the free spirit, hippie type of girl. <laughs> And she's super funny and cute, I think. Um, And we see on this episode that she wants to start a Juban, I think (laughs) is what she called it, which is a Jewish Cuban truck, truck. a food truck, um, which is super cool idea because if you think about it, it's a good fusion. And it sounds, yeah, it sounds like, it sounds a good, like a good idea. Cuban food is amazing. And then ha- to have it kosher and all of that is even better for you. Um, so we get to see her starting, trying to start her career with the food truck. 
and she meets a woman named Michelle who has her own food truck. And she was giving her all the bad news first, <laughs> like just reading her up and down. Um, and then she got a chance to get on the food truck and see what she liked about it. What did you guys think about it? I don't it? think she liked a lot about <laughs> it. <laughs> Clearly. <laughs> Lizzie, I, I thought that whole scene was really, really funny because uh, I loved how she was just keeping it so real. She was just like, listen, she doesn't know how much of right. a bee I can be. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, she brought the Cuban out. <laughs> yeah, she definitely did. Yeah. Because I saw the point. It's like, listen, I came on this truck to see what it's like, not to work, to for, work you. for you. Yeah. You know, sorry, lady. What was her name? Michelle. Michelle. Sorry, Michelle. But she wasn't on there to work for her. It was like, listen, this should be a talking me through type of thing. Mm -hmm. How else am I going to see what the reality is of, you know, running a food truck? Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? I think her having to do the work, though, definitely helped her in her decision to know, yeah. like, this, it's not all like glitz and glamour. <laughs> As it would be, so. Yeah, like she says, she's like, I imagine myself just like at, at the, the window. window like, <laughs> talking you know. I mean, that's, I mean, when I think of a food truck, I, you don't think about everything going behind. You're just like, food, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> you know? But it was really smart of her to actually bring Christina. So Christina, if she is wanting to for her to invest in her idea in the beginning, to bring her to see this is where I could be on this street, which is a street in Los Angeles. Um, on Wilshire, where a lot of the lunch food trucks um, like go there for lunchtime, and people like bombard, and they have everything from macaroni hot dogs <laughs> yeah. to I don't know, Did wonderful they just, garlic fries, wonderful oh. garlic fries. <laughs> Why are you talking to everything? <laughs> and now, actually, which I saw in the airport, they have one of the food trucks that is on the food truck row inside of our LAX airport now. The oh, actual wow. food truck itself? They built like a mock, like, you know. Oh, but it cool. looks real. It looks like a food truck that's on the street. But it's, it, I think it's um, the Kobe one. Oh, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so there's Kobe barbecue. Yes, Kobe barbecue. So there's so many different like flavors, and it's super cool. So just if you guys aren't familiar with food trucks, we have a lot of them here in LA, and they are safe. They're not like <laughs> bad to eat. They are. They do have grades and stuff like well, that. Well, Michelle, Michelle's comment about food trucks are kind of dying off. That was surprising to me because I feel like I see food trucks all the time. But yeah, yeah. So, I, think, I think it's still the new thing. I yeah, mean, so. you know, and that's and what I thought. Yeah, it's it's actually really smart. I actually think that if Lizzie did that it would be an incredible um, business decision for her to mm -hmm. make because first of all like she's a chef she's mm -hmm. a cook so you, you know that the food is going to be good and mm -hmm. then um, secondly what better idea than to be like mobile and then get your name out there especially now she's got this name for herself mm -hmm. you know what I right. mean so I think it would be popular but at the same time who's to say because all that work especially mm -hmm. I worked in a restaurant I was a server in a restaurant I was like really good actually hello <laughs> yes <laughs> those shoulders Brush off. That off okay mm -hmm. so um but it was written, and I worked in a, you, you know what Houston's restaurant is? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it was really, um, it, it's really, it's fancy. It's um, really popular and really, um, it could be a lot of traffic at times and everything like that. But that's a nice sized restaurant. Mm -hmm. And that was mm -hmm. really even tumultuous sometimes. You know, it was really right. hard working in that type of environment, even though it was a nice sized restaurant. So I can only imagine a food truck. You are working in this much space, space. with mm -hmm. people you have to really like. Right. You know what I'm saying? So um, I could understand her decision to be like, I don't know if it's right for me because, mm -hmm. you know, that's a that's a big decision to make financially and to be in that type of space yeah. with some other Absolutely, people. Absolutely, because like it's, it's a restaurant on wheels and I mean, there's all kinds of car problems. You get like a flat tire on your way, you lose out on all your income for the day. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's definitely like it's like two two things in one. Well, I'm, okay. I'm sorry. It could be, but then it could not because, you know, there are those food trucks who tweet out, this is where I am today. <laughs> we yeah. got a flat tire. Come, come to us. us. We're right on the corner of... <laughs> I will let you guys know I file, uh, I file, follow, oh my God, the grilled cheese truck on Twitter. Oh, do you so, know? I totally Well, I know understand. that sometimes the food trucks, like, they all want to be in that popular location and sometimes if they don't get there, they have to get there, like, before the sun comes up just to stake out their spot and if they yeah. don't, then they have to go home for the day and like can't sell their items. Yeah, because that so I mean, like, like, really like we said, it's on Wilshire, so it's very busy. Uh -huh. It's a lot of offices and a lot of people that only have an hour for lunch and they have to make the decision. The line's long mm -hmm. and there's only a few parking spots. So it's, yeah. <laughs> you know what I would have to say? Um, if Lizzie changed her mind, Lizzie, if you change your mind, make the drinks Viva Diva. 
Hey, okay, make the drinks be diva because I'm loving it. You're probably going to have to pass that bottle too. <laughs> and yeah. I think we just, want seconds over here. I think it's such a great idea to do um, like make it kosher Cuban food because I mean I love kosher food. I love you know all of that, but I just think sometimes like it's a little oh, boring. You. you know, like Cantor's yeah. is great, but it can be boring. But to bring in like a Cuban flair, it makes like kosher just seem like. Yeah. Fire. Just no pork, yeah. which, like Christina says, I'm Cuban and I like pork, so yeah. that's the only thing. But she can make it make it work. Yeah. yeah. Perhaps yeah. what yeah. she can do if she doesn't want to actually have to work in the food truck is just like own it and like have her name attached to it, but mm-hmm. have someone to like manage it or and, like, other and people all to, of her like, recipes. Idea. You know, because yeah. she is a chef, so I know as a chef that you want to have your your brand your food because you know it tastes yeah. good you want the people to say who made this who created this so at least have someone that's like maybe your sous chef or someone that you trust that can recreate your dish for you or you give them the ingredients and they yeah. they love that kind of business and they don't mind the hustle bustle and the sweat then they can go mm-hmm. in there and whip it up and her and christina manage it from the background and serve some viva diva up mm-hmm. in there okay so are we officially saying Lizzie, open the food, the food truck, truck restaurant and just run it from afar. You don't have to work on it, but you can have your ideas, your your recipes, mm-hmm. and hire some nice little people, not little people, but hire some <laughs> nice people to run to the, the food it. truck. Yeah. Yeah. Are we saying that? Yes. yes. Okay, we're saying, saying that. that. Lizzie, it's still a great idea, so go ahead and open the, the Jubin uh, food truck restaurant. And invite <laughs> us to it, girl, because we want to try it out, and we'll bring some Viva Diva to it <laughs> if you want to have any more. <laughs> So um, our episode was 30 minutes, so I thought, we thought it was an hour, Um, but do you have any news and gossip, Robin? I have some news and gossip. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Well, you guys, um, last week was fun. Wasn't last week fun? Mm Mm-hmm. Okay. I have to, uh, Mm -hmm. I had an opportunity to share our episode with Carmen Millian. Hey. (laughs) First of all, Carmen. No pressure. Yeah, she (laughs) loves our show. She loves our show. So she says, congratulations. She loves the look of it. She loves what we're talking about and our energy on the show. She wanted to clear some things up because we had some some questions. Oh, great. Yes. So, uh, Carmen. Yes. So (laughs) I'm going to uh, run down a few of the questions that we had and then her responses to them. Okay. So we we wondered, um, someone asked, who, t- who took care of Lizzie and Danielle when Christina and Carmen were on the road? Right. Carmen has a friend of over 15 years, Her one of her best friends, um, Karen, uh-huh. who took care, or they um, Lizzie and Danielle would stay at her home. But she wanted to make clear that it wasn't like Carmen was out, like for like she just left the girls and she just went off on tour for years or months or whatever. She said it would be, you know, a few days at a time or a week at a time or at most maybe like a month. Mm-hmm. But that was like even rare. So they all, all that time they would be staying at um, Karen's home. Mm-hmm. So, but she was still very, very much in their lives. So we were probably under the uh, the you know assumption that Carmen was off. You know, with Tina, right. but that wasn't necessarily. Well, shout the case. out to Karen. Thank you, yes. Karen. Thank you, Karen. Thank you, Karen. Auntie um, Karen. Auntie Karen. <laughs> we also wanted to know if Lizzie and Danielle were financially uh, dependent on Christina. Not the case. Oh, okay. So not the case. Uh, Danielle is well. First of all, I I actually want to mention too. Both Christina and Carmen would help um, pay for cosmetology school for Danielle, as well as culinary school for Lizzie. Oh, nice. So yeah. So that so it's one of those sorts of things. They're not financially um, dependent on Christina, but it is sort of like a sibling thing. Like I don't know if you guys have siblings. I know you do. Mm-hmm. Um, but. So, for instance, if your brother or your sister needed, like, can I, can you help me real quick with yeah. rent this right. month and then I'll pay it back? Yeah, no, yes. my brother just gave me like $500 last week. So, boom. There you go. Thank you, Jermaine. About. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to you, Jermaine, because that's exactly yeah, the point. Yeah, for school. He gave it to me for school. So, yeah. Yeah. So, like, and if you have the opportunity or when you have the opportunity, you'll pay that money back. Mm-hmm. So, it's something like that. But you're not like, Jermaine, uh, paid my whole life, you know, yeah. take care of my entire <laughs> life. So, that's sort of the relationship that they have. But it's, it's not just with Christina, but it's kind as well like she helps out you know um, but they are also um, financially dependent they have you know jobs Danielle is a working um, cosmetologist she does um, red carpet things she does bridal um, things for weddings um, bridal hair and everything and um, Lizzie is a like a personal chef like she definitely holds it down and she does um, 
uh, events for people. And she actually did, um, which I thought was really, really cool. She was the, uh, basically she ran the entire thing of um, one of the sorority houses for 150 UCLA girls. So like she was really holding it down. I know, right? So to you ladies. There you go. Um, And so yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, We also had the question of, but this became a big uh, topic of ours. If Lizzie completely converted to Judaism because of someone, mm-hmm. but she she actually dated two Jewish guys oh, and wow. decided to she fell in love with the religion and then decided that she was going to convert. But it wasn't like oh because of that person yeah, okay. she just fell in love with the religion like we were talking about. Mm-hmm. So um you know we just have to clear that up so she didn't <laughs> just you know go there um danielle and richard were together for three years prior to getting married Mm. we didn't know that i didn't Mm. know that last episode so we wanted to make mention they were together for three years but they actually go back to junior or high school together yeah so they've known each other since their teenage years but they weren't dating then they just became uh you know a couple in their uh, adult years and they actually lived in vegas for two and a half years before coming to um to los angeles because richard's company transferred him back here so with and the reason why Danielle I guess is going through all the emotions and all that stuff is number one they planned a, a big wedding it was mm-hmm. beautiful I you know I wasn't there Danielle but yeah. I, 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 just kidding. I wasn't there but I saw many many pictures and I heard so much about it I heard it was beautiful so planning the wedding um, of course with tra- transferring having to come back to LA with having a baby it was just a lot going yeah, on definitely. so that's what we're seeing. We're seeing so much going on um, that we weren't able to see before. But yeah, just thought I would clear some of those nice. things Ooh, up. Thank, thank you. Yeah, yeah, thank, thank you, Carmen. You, Carmen. Yeah, For thank you, answers. Carmen. That was just, I thought that was so awesome of you to, you know, write into our, our questions that we had. So yeah. I feel thank like she you. needs to come on the show and just be a panelist with us. Mm-hmm. I know. Carmen, why don't you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I think that would be cool. Lizzie, Danielle, feel free to come on in. Christina, um, if, Christina, if you come, bring Violet. Yes. <laughs> yes. We love Violet. So um, Richard, yeah, you can come too. And then all, all the others who have insight to the show and insight about them and maybe some of our questions, like they have really uh, close friends, Lauren, um, um, there's Marina. There's so many of their friends and people in their lives that we can kind of get on the show maybe and see if they could, you know, Fingers give us crossed. some insight. Yeah. And you guys definitely um, go into our comments and if you have any more questions, hopefully that Carmen can ask or if that we can ask, definitely ask them and we will get back to you about them next week. Um, what do you guys think? Does anyone have any predictions? I have one. <laughs> okay. Now, wait. You're after I'll wait. TV. Predictions. predictions. Okay, do I start when the music yeah, cuts off? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> like, this is my first after a show. Um, I predict that Christina is not going to get, she's not going to go through with getting her rear end plumped up. <laughs> I, I hmm. think it's so crazy how, you know, like, uh, cupcakes were a fad and frozen yogurt was a big fad mm-hmm. and like butts are just like a, a huge, huge fad, fad right now. And it's so crazy to me. So, I mean, we we kind of know what happens, but when I saw that part in the preview, I was like, <gasps> <laughs> And if anything, just get some fat transfers, though. Like, I heard that fat transfer is better than the actual implant. If I've anybody's seen some nasty-ass videos, excuse my French, <laughs> of butt implants, like, flipping yes. and stuff. Oh, oh man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're right about that because it is a fad because there are people who had the butt implants who also gotten them reduced because of it's no longer a thing to do. So I agree with that. Um, Part of my prediction, and it's hard for me to give predictions because I'm trying to be like, you know. You kind of know more. I guess I'm trying to play it like safe. But I will say that I think maybe um, Christina is turning up, but maybe she'll find a balance. Mm. Maybe she'll find that very happy balance. So I'm going to keep it right there and drink on my Viva Diva. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Okay, Kermit. Kermit. Mm -hmm. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. Go ahead, Michelle. I already did Oh, hey. <laughs> well, my prediction is I don't have one, but I know what I will predict is that you guys will watch us next week. It has yeah. been a you great episode. We have been turned up. The wine was amazing. Thank you so much again to Carmen and Christina. Thank you. Make sure you guys go purchase you a bottle online or at your local store. Yay. Thank you. It's very good. Very it yummy. It is good. 
Um, you guys, again, can always find me on Instagram at Pink English as well as on Twitter, English Speaks. Again, Twitter, Instagram, XOXO Cheska, C E S C A, just in case you can't spell. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm Michelle Renee. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Michelle Renee TV. And guys, you can find me, Robin Ayers, Robin with an I, A Y E R S. Take care. From executive producers Maria Manunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later! The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.